So I'm here tonight to champion some champions. I'm not a champion, but I sure love telling their story. And I sat down with about 20 champions to tell the story of the aging athlete. In the meantime, I had to come up with a hook. What was I gonna talk about for these aging athletes? Well, I went to see a doctor, and the doctor told me an amazing fact. This is Dr. Bill Gallivan, who's a fourth generation orthopedic surgeon, which means his great, great worked on people in the Civil War. He said to me, write a book called The Aging Athlete, it's a new field in orthopedic medicine. So I don't know what he had in mind, but my field is mindset. I wanna know what makes people the way they are. So the first person I met was a 1966 fourth round pick, fourth pick of the NFL draft. His name is Randy Beisler, number 65. And I asked him, when you go to the reunions, now in your late 60s with these aging athletes, how many of them, what percentage are still fit? The message he gave me was shocking. Less than 10% are still fit and well. So imagine football players, 260 pounds of thrust. They're like locomotives heading towards each other. What happens at high speed when those people hit? And then what does the coach tell you when you're a little bit dizzy? Shake it off, get back out on the field, win one for the team. The first aging athlete I interviewed after Randy was Luis Limao Heredia, who's a smaller of stature person who wanted to be a professional surfer in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. That didn't work out. He never got to the finals of any of his surfing competitions, but he did become a five-time Pan American champion in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. The most famous aging athlete and the most famous person ever to speak with me on the cell phone and in person is this man, Kim Chamrock, who's known as the world's most dangerous man. He's my age. He lives in Reno, he takes his message, and he's trying to help other aging athletes with their problems, originally from Macon, Georgia. Now, what's the difference between a performance person like the military, like football, like a ballet person who works six days a week? That's something that's not a lifetime sport. That's something that doesn't necessarily build wellness and the human anatomy and the human psychology. What happens to these people in the military? Less than 10% are still fit, even one month out of the military. This is a wellness activity. It's actually a practice, like yoga, like some forms of martial arts and qigong, a completely different story than the aging athletes that have rota torn rotator cuffs um, knee problems, hip problems. This is a completely different aging athlete again. On the left in the picture is a friend of mine, Jason Jewell, who's from Santa Barbara now. He's an ex-pro squash player. He used his squash to get through college, to travel through Europe, through the Middle East. All those people on the sign are from international people that he played with. Another aging athlete is on the left. He was the small fry of the cousins and the brothers and his family growing up in the tough town outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He always wanted to be like his big brother, number 33. So Mac McCluskey said to himself, I'm gonna be more determined than anyone else. And that little guy became a college football player, a professional football player, a third degree black belt in Taekwondo, and now he's a champion endurance athlete. And finally, in the little picture on the right, you can see what he was after, which was his father's blessing, an amazing story. So Mac is kind of the poster boy for this entire story. Here's a civil rights football game, another Santa Barbara native, Sam Cunningham, number 39, in the New England Patriots jersey up top. He played football at a time where there were racial problems, and his first flight ever went from Los Angeles to Birmingham, Alabama, when there were, there were no black players on the uh, University of Alabama team. What did the assistant coach say? Not, not Bear Bryant, who's pictured with the hat on the left, but the assistant coach, Jerry Claiborne, said, Sam Cunningham did more to integrate Alabama in 60 minutes than Martin Luther King did in 20 years. An amazing story. So Sam was another great athlete I had the chance to enter. You may have seen Midnight Express. It's a movie that still gives people goosebumps. Well, I interviewed Billy Hayes. Something told me to contact him. Something told me he had a story about being an aging athlete. Well, it turns out he was a little guy, but he was a champion full, uh, halfback for his team in the Bronx, New York. And later, he was given a, a book of yoga right before he went into prison. Chris Blair. Firefighter, aging athlete, still competes. He retired early, takes care of his kids, and boy, does he love to train. So Chris Blair is the perfect example of an aging athlete who didn't injure himself beyond repair and is taking care of himself with maintenance. 
Here's Alan Winder, the blue-eyed soul brother, and next to the gentleman with the beard. He's a man of many, many talents. I told him he had so many talents, that's where he went wrong. So he had a couple of problems along the way because of these many talents, but along the way he got a, a phone call from Meadowlark Lemon of the Harlem Globetrotters who said, and you'll see Meadowlark all the way on the left in this picture, and you'll see the only white man in the picture. He said, Alan, how would you like to break the color barrier? in reverse. And so he became the first person to do that. That picture's from 1981, and he's one of my favorite people. We've become friends, very close friends. So the white man amongst the band of brothers. Here's another black gentleman from the Deep South originally. Robbie Robinson grew up during the Vietnam era. He was sent over to Vietnam. He went AWOL, and he, because he went AWOL those two months, he was able to go train on an island. And before he was sent over to Vietnam, he did his training, then he was sent back to America. So he's a survivor of Vietnam. Yes, You Can, one of the most inspirational stories that I've ever seen in my life. Team Hoyt, father is in his 70s. Dick Hoyt's son, Rick, has been disabled at, since birth, and they run triathlons, and they're the most famous triathlon, triathletes in the world from Massachusetts. And the most famous native, living Native American by many accounts is Billy Mills, who's age 75 now, lives outside of Sacramento, grew up poor kid on an Indian reservation, wound up winning the 64 Olympics, the only Native American ever win the 10,000 meters. Thank you very much. Take a look at theagingathlete.com.